This is Kevin Moore from Timba.com with an introduction to Beyond Salsa Percussion, Volume 1. And it's an amazingly quick and easy method for learning Latin rhythms. Let's try it. The left speaker, the teacher, builds the rhythm one stroke at a time, leaving space for you to sing or clap what you hear. The right speaker is your tutor. In other words, the right speaker plays your part along with you so you can be sure you clapped it right. Later on, you can turn the balance control to the left and try the exercise without training wheels. The teacher plays each chunk of the rhythm two times, so you get two tries to copy it. Okay, let's do this thing. For those of you who found this mind-numbingly way too easy, don't despair. You'll be supremely challenged a bit later in this video when we get to three rhythms at once. But first, let's throw a life preserver to the people who found this exercise too hard. The solution lies in the maraca part. Rhythms exist in time, and the secret to playing them is to subdivide that time into equal units, just like the subdivisions on a ruler. Every stroke in every rhythm in this book will line up with one of the maraca strokes. So the secret is to get that maraca groove into your blood. To see this in action, let's borrow an Align Paris video from Beyond Salsa Bass. If you look up the word groove in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of this guy. I've seen him light an entire band on fire with just a few notes. So let's take a peek behind the curtain and watch him as he warms up to film one of the exercises for Beyond Salsa Bass. There are two things you want to pay attention to. The percussive sounds he makes with his hands in between notes, and the percussive sounds he never stops making with his mouth. This is how he locks in with the subdivisions. You can't hear them when he plays with a full band, but they're the key to his hellacious groove. Now, back to work. For every exercise in this book, there are four audio files. We were clapping along with the C file for 3-2 son clave. The D file is exactly the same, but much slower. Let's try just the first part of this one so we don't bore everyone else to death. There's a link in the description to a free download of a sample of these files that you can practice on your own. See how deeply you can lock in with the Maraca subdivisions.
Now that we've mastered 3-2 son clave, let's put it to use. Watch the timbalero's left stick on the red jam block and try to clap along. <laughs> Before we talk about notation, let's step back and realize that we just learned an important rhythm completely by ear, with no written music or verbal explanation, just by listening and copying. This is indeed how a lot of music is learned in Cuba, and brings us to one of the most important insights in the book. Right now we're just learning how rhythms go, but when it comes to actually learning to play them on a percussion instrument, there's a huge advantage to learning by rote the old school Cuban way. You wind up copying not just the rhythm, but all the mannerisms, body language, and subtle rhythmic inflections of your teacher. In many ways, learning a percussion instrument is a lot like taking golf, tennis, or dance lessons. North American teachers often spend hours trying to verbally explain complex body movements. But at the end of the day, it's something that you just have to get the hang of by copying. The problem is that when you go to a master Cuban musician and try to learn this way, the difficulty of learning the rhythm itself in the first place takes over most of your brain bandwidth and prevents you from absorbing the more subtle nuances by osmosis. The whole idea of Beyond Salsa Percussion Volume 1 is to learn to clap and sing the rhythms before you ever touch an instrument. If you can tap one rhythm with your right hand, another with your left, and a third with your foot before you go to the master Cuban musician, you'll be able to devote 100% of your energy to watching, listening, copying, and absorbing all of the intangible qualities that made this sought-after musician a master in the first place. This prevents you from learning bad habits as you struggle to get the raw rhythm down. So not only is it not necessary to read music to play percussion, learning by ear can be a quicker, more natural, and much deeper method. So if this is true, why do we supply four different types of notation for each rhythm? Well, remember, the strategy is to be able to sing, tap, or clap each combination of rhythms before attempting them on a real percussion instrument. It's this first stage where notation can be a big help, depending on the person. If you're a good speller, or if you're the type of person who likes to see a new word written, it'll probably help you. But if you're really good at imitating people's voices and accents, then you're probably better off learning by ear. Notation can also help you retain a lot of rhythms in your memory. Let's take a look at some of the celebrated freaks of nature in the world of music. Franz Liszt, Felix Mendelssohn, and Dmitri Shostakovich are only three of the composers who have been repeatedly described as having essentially memorized all of the parts of all of the pieces by all of the major composers. Now how could Liszt have possibly done this? How could he retain in his memory the second violin part of every obscure symphony, concerto, and string quartet? Here's my theory. I believe he used his eyes as much as his ears, that he had a photographic memory, and what he was really remembering were the visual images of each page of music. In any case, for us mere mortals, it can be useful to have some way of visualizing rhythms. So, which of the four? Well, choose your poison. The third line is standard notation in 4-4, as usually written in Cuba, and the bottom line is standard notation in 2-2, as usually written outside Cuba. But in many ways, the top two lines are more useful because they look more like the rhythm's sound. The top line has a square for every maraca subdivision, and the second line has either an X or an O for each subdivision. Let's use the top method to learn 3-2 rumba clave, which is only one stroke different from the 3-2 son clave rhythm we learned earlier. It sounds like this. Now, listen to the maracas and follow along. This is the B track, the whole pattern in slow motion, but I've slowed it down even further to help you understand how the notation works.
All right, now that we've got our methodology down, let's step back and take a whirlwind tour of the full scope of this Encyclopedia of Rhythms. Chapter two covers two beat rhythms. We call these clave neutral because they use the same rhythm on each side of the clave. As an example, let's check out the omnipresent Guido part. In chapter three, we learn four beat patterns, which include the clave itself, including the very useful clave marker sequence, the bell patterns played by the timbalero and bongocero, various other patterns for timbales, timba drum set patterns, conga marches, and very importantly, the various basic dance steps. We give these top billing to emphasize their importance. As a percussionist, you won't have to spin and dip your partner or become a gymnast, but dancing in place is the key to mastering the many mysteries of clave, as we'll see in the video on understanding clave and clave changes. This section will also help you retain your sanity when you hear your dancer friends arguing and reveling in terms like dancing on one, dancing on two, on three, New York two, power two, cha-cha-cha, the Arsenio step, and so on. Like every other rhythm in the book, we learn the dance patterns with our trusty step-by-step -step method, no pun intended. At first, the dance step looks like a two-beat pattern, but it's the left-right-left, right-left-right that extends it, and the two sides of your body are the key to understanding the two sides of the clave. Now we need to explain the overlap between Beyond Salsa Percussion Volume 1 and Beyond Salsa for Beginners. The chapters we've covered so far in this video are in both of these books, and here's why. Beyond Salsa Percussion Volume 1 is designed to prepare you to learn to play timbales or drum set in a band, while Beyond Salsa for Beginners is for listeners, dancers, and players of non-percussion instruments who just want to understand what the percussionists are doing to increase their enjoyment of the music. Needless to say, these folks can benefit greatly from everything we've talked about so far, but they don't need to be able to play two and three rhythms at once. A timbalero or drummer, of course, needs to develop enough rhythmic independence to play two or three patterns at the same time. And this is where our step-by-step -step technique really shines. So, Beyond Salsa for Beginners contains all the material we've discussed so far, plus a four-part history and music appreciation course, with listening tours that go through all the various eras and genres of Cuban music. Beyond Salsa Percussion doesn't include these history chapters, but it does go into exhaustive detail on all the two- and three-part rhythms needed to play professionally. Let's learn a two-part rhythm commonly used in timba breakdowns. The drummer plays rumba clave on the jam block while playing a special characteristic kick drum part. Tap the kick part with your right foot and tap the clave part with your right hand. Now let's apply our magical method.
Chapter 5's survey of two rhythm patterns is quite exhaustive, covering the combinations used in most of the gears of most of the major salsa and timba bands. Chapter 6 moves on to three rhythm patterns. As a working timbalero slash drummer, the parts you're asked to play will depend on the rhythm section configuration of the band. If the band is set up like Charanga Banero with a bongo cero who plays hand bell, you'll be playing the mambo bell and kick drum. If it's set up like Los Que Son Son with a timbalero who plays both bells, you'll be playing strictly drums with parts for kick, hi-hat, and snare. Or you'll be playing timbales. In a group like Van Van, you'll have to play kick drum plus both bells. This is very common in the United States because it allows the band to play with just two percussionists instead of three. Let's look at this last approach in the basic style of Samuel Formel. Chapter 4 takes a different approach in which we give each rhythmic position a name and learn to play it against the main beats and the clave. It's sort of like rhythmic solfeggio. Finally, Chapter 7, called Rhythmic Perspective, covers five of the most common problems that students of Latin music invariably find confusing. Looking ahead, Beyond Salsa Percussion Volumes 2 and 3 are on the incredible drummer and timbalero Calixto Oviedo, who played on so many of the classic hits of N.G. La Banda and Adalberto Alvarez, among others. Atrás